uh, think the district, obviously, is one of the major issues. In your view, what are the education needs of the district? Where do you see school seats being needed or other uh, programs being needed? How would you address these issues? And you know, in, in the villagers area, we have 75 Morton Street, which is a middle school taking formation. And um, how about that NYU school on the super block that seems to be under a, a tight deadline now of one year or two? to uh, SDA to make a decision on that. So in general, schools issues, and uh, who would start this one? Uh, is it, where are we at? Corey, Corey can, can you start? repeat the question again? Just you know, uh, in, to be, in the brief version, what, what are the education needs of the school, of the district? And do you have any thoughts on 75 Morton Street and the NYU school on the super blocks specifically? So, as I said at the beginning, there is severe overcrowding that is happening in our schools on the west side, and it's because uh, classroom seats are not keeping up with reckless overdevelopment that has happened in our communities uh, all along the west side. So what do we need to do? We need to support uh, local schools that exist to make sure they have adequate resources to teach the kids in those schools, and we also have to make sure that we build new schools. 75 Morton Street is going to be a middle school. The community plan has talked about 600 seats for that middle school on Morton Street. Hopefully it will serve uh, PS41 and PS3 in the village, PS11 and PS33 uh, in Chelsea, and it has been a community plan. PS3 and PS41 have really spearheaded an incredible plan, and uh, Keen Berger, uh, who is a Democratic district leader in the village, has done a tremendous amount of work on this, as has Community Board too. I'm very excited about uh, 75 Morton Street. PS51 on 45th Street in Hell's Kitchen is getting a brand new school facility uh, in two weeks when school opens. And it's because of the work we did on the community board. We almost doubled the capacity of the school. But there is still overcrowding. We have to keep fighting for new public schools. We have the Foundling site that's going to open up at 16th Street and 6th Avenue. And hopefully when PS51, the Foundling site, 75 Morton uh, come online, it will hopefully start to ease the overcrowding that exists right now and helps reduce class sizes. I will continue to fight for that if I'm on the city council. How about the NYU Superblock School? Is that, how do you see that one? Well, I, I, I guess it's a semi-good thing that came out of the proposal. I still think that the NYU plan was a terribly flawed and bad plan and that uh, we'll see what happens with that school uh, and what NYU actually does. I think there are still major community concerns about the facility that NYU has talked about, and so I'm still unsure about what's gonna happen on that site, um, but the other schools I feel really confident about. Yeah. Sure. Um, I, education is very important to me. I'm an educator. I, I came. I was able to become educated through the public schools uh, only because of the educational opportunity programs that were around. I was able to complete a bachelor's degree in women's studies, a master's degree in U.S. Asian studies, and to complete my law degree at Brooklyn Law School. I think education is another way to move towards social justice. It's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I also founded an alternative language and culture resource center. Uh, based on that, I was invited to teach as an adjunct professor at NYU, uh, where I taught a graduate course to prepare teachers to teach in the New York City public school systems uh, English as a second language. And uh, I think that we really need, of course, the issue of overcrowding is very serious for our community, and the problems that happen with overdevelopment impact us on every level, education being one of them. It's great to see the Morton School. Uh, we need to make sure the NY School happens, the Fowling School happens. But what we need to do, maybe I can back into the question, the answer about um, housing and, and affordable housing and development is that one of the things that I'd like to see to make sure that development happens in a sustainable and responsible way is to have inclusionary zoning so that we are required to have affordable housing every time a development comes up and we are required to make sure that there's public schools also as part of that. Do you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I just want to say we've that's what we've done on Community Board 4. We have done inclusionary housing to incentivize affordable housing being built. And I think inclusionary housing, inclusionary zoning uh, is a good thing, but I don't think it's the answer. I think the answer is actually taking public city funds and building real mixed income affordable housing. Inclusionary zoning does give us some units, 
but it is not the answer. The answer is actually taking part of our budget and building real affordable housing that works for folks. And I have been doing that, which is why Tenants Pack and the Working Families Party and so many affordable housing advocates have endorsed my campaign. The, yeah. the, the two problems with that is, first of all, again, we've only built 16% of the 5,000 units of affordable housing that we were supposed to build, and, th and two thirds of those units aren't actually affordable. The other problem is if we have such a real estate friendly uh, representation in city council and in the Euler process, we take those public funds and put them right back into more luxury development. The problem with all of this is that we have to hold developers' feet to the fire. We have to have somebody who's not tied to those real estate interests who can make sure that the con concessions that we fight for are actually achieved. We're going to do one more round of applause on this one. So there you go again. Uh, you know, we, you said that I was calling you names. You continue to distort who I am. I am not friendly with real estate interests. I work at a company do marketing for two hotels, one in Scottsdale and one in Palm Springs. I have never made a lot of money. If anyone wants to come see my apartment, they'll see I'm the uh, poorest real estate executive on this side of the Mississippi because it is just factually inaccurate. I have stood up time and again and opposed reckless overdevelopment, whether it be the NYU land grab, whether it be the Chelsea Market expansion, whether it be the Root and Plan at St. Vincent's. I have done it over and over and over again. I don't think that that shows friendliness to developers. I think that shows standing up and speaking out when you feel like something is not right for the community. I will continue to do that. And again, I think it's important to accurately, accurately describe who we are and what we do. I have been a working class guy my entire life. I have never made a lot of money. I don't complain when I say that, but I am proud of my working class roots and where I come from. Uh, I am proud of the fact that I am the son of, my mom is my lunch lady and works in a homeless shelter, and my dad was a Pepsi truck driver. I get to finish and then you can rebut. Yes, um, yes you do. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm proud of that. I have, I have fought for the community, and, and you know, Jerry Nadler wouldn't support a real estate executive. Uh, Tenants Pack wouldn't support a real estate executive. Woo! The Working Families Party wouldn't support a real estate executive. Right. So you can continue to say it, but it's just factually inaccurate and divorced from reality. Woo! Yeah. Um, so the Seidel Group, where you work, is an offshoot of GFI Development No, it's not. It's, it's that's that's factually by inaccurate. By it's not. The owner of Seidel wasn't one of the directors at GFI? It's not an offshoot. There is someone that worked at both, but it's not an offshoot okay. at all. It's, it's, it's a totally factually inaccurate. And what do I do there? I do marketing for two hotels. Thank you. Thank you. Again, um, whether you make, I know that you said you make $52,000 part-time working for Seidel, whether you make $52,000, $520,000, whatever it is, you worked as the Director of Government Affairs for GFI Development. At the la one, of the, one of the prior forums we were at, you stood up and said that you created 26% affordable housing in an upzoning project at 470 Vanderbilt, and we went to 470 Vanderbilt. There's no affordable housing, there's no residential housing there whatsoever, and also, every single upzone plan that has gone through your community board while you were chair has been approved. This is not the vision for affordable housing. It is not an affordable housing crisis. We are in an affordable housing emergency, and we need to be able to stand up to these types of interests. Number one, the community board is not uh, a, a dictatorship. I don't decide what the board does. I stood up and I said that I was against it and I fought against it and you can talk to the people in the community 
Leslie Doyle, Justin Hoy, uh, Bill Borak, folks who I partnered with against uh, development. Director of Government Affairs, uh, yes, I did community outreach to the NYPD, to the Business Improvement District, to local elected officials. And on the affordable housing you're talking about, you can go back and look at the tape. I did not say that it was built. I said that there was an agreement and there was a restrictive declaration in place so that if it gets built, there will be an affordable housing component to it. Okay. That is what I said. Okay, yeah, that you get 30. It's, it's not what you said, and frankly, it is a breach of public trust that you oh. claim these words. Oh. And if you oh, what do you mean? If, what do you mean? Talk. Well, let her explain what she means. Your argument is that you were ineffective. You stood up against this development, but you couldn't have you couldn't control your community board. How are you going to be as a city council member on the same issues? Okay. I don't want to control people. I want people to do what they think is right. Let me let me move to a different topic.